डू यू पुट योर थम्ब इम्प्रेशन ऑन मोदी की गारंटी और नॉट नॉट एन इलेक्शन बट ए प्लेबिसाइड नॉट नॉर्मल बट कंट्रोल्ड नॉट अबाउट चूजिंग ए न्यू गवर्नमेंट बट अबाउट चूजिंग ए न्यू कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑन डेमोक्रेसी दे वॉज एन अनमिस्टेकेबल सेंस इन सम क्वार्टर्स ऑफ पब्लिक जब गाँव में हम किसी को पहली बार सरपंच बनाते हैं वो डर के काम करता है सीधा दूसरी बार बना दें तो वो थोड़ा दो नंबर का सीख जाता है तीसरी बार बना दें तो सर के ऊपर चढ़ के डंडा चलाता है इन अदर वर्ड्स द बैटल फॉर रिकवरी ऑफ रिपब्लिक और रिक्लेमिंग द रिपब्लिक हैज टू बिकम ए रेडिकल बैटल फॉर सोशल रिओर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ दिस कंट्री इट्स ए ग्रेट चैलेंज इट्स ए ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी grateful to the bangalore international center for this uh, opportunity uh i've actually never been here i've heard about it and this is my first opportunity uh grateful to the team here for having invited me and grateful to all of you for this uh, a great opportunity yeah maybe to the other campus but not to this wonderful new building uh someone met me at the airport last evening and said have you seen that new building i said actually not but i'm going to speak there tomorrow so this is uh, a wonderful opportunity thank you how do we think about the election that has just been concluded one way a conservative normal way would be to say look Sure is a government that has had two terms getting the third term is tough for any government in the world and if the incumbent has managed to get a third term maybe with less than a majority maybe with some coalition partners that's not a small achievement the government has got a message message would introduce the required course correction and all is well all is normal nothing can be farther from truth in the case of this election and i want to persuade you through a series of six propositions first is it my phone that's doing the trick sorry the only one number that could ring at this time is ringing uh, uh, <clears throat> so i want to persuade you through a series of six propositions uh first that this was not an election that might sound strange a normal election is about choosing a new government this is not what the election was all about this was a controlled plebiscite not an election but a plebiscite not normal but controlled not about choosing a new government but about choosing a new constitution and by constitution i do not mean the formal document called the constitution of india by constitution i mean the basic structure of political choices structure of political institutions that you have in a society why do i call it a plebiscite because the people were being invited to vote not about the nda this election had nothing to do with the nda the word nda figures after the results were out this was not about the bjp this was about one man modi ki guarantee so in a sense it was a plebiscite where people of india were invited to say do you put your thumb impression on modi ki guarantee or not so in the property business you have that uh, uh, power of attorney and there is something called general power of attorney where you basically surrender all the rights to that property so it was about giving general power of attorney to mr modi for whatever he's done in the last 10 years and whatever he might do in the next few that's what this election was about to 
put it even more precisely, this election was about transforming our political system. I would not say from democracies to dictatorship, because we were not democracy in any case by the beginning of this election. Our system is best described as competitive authoritarianism. Because in 21st century, the neat model of democracy versus dictatorship doesn't quite work. Uh, we have uh, most, uh, a large number of regimes are hybrid. Ours was competitive authoritarianism, an authoritarian government that allows genuine competition to take place. And we were about to slide into electoral autocracy, which is a Putin style, where it's autocracy, but keeps a farce of elections once in a while. This is what was at stake in this election. And this was not normal because everything was controlled in such a major election. Basically, the rulers ensure they leave nothing to the chance. Money, media, the entire administrative apparatus, agencies, and I'm ashamed to say even the Election Commission of India, they were all part of that design to secure that mandate. So that's why I say it, is, it was not a normal election. It was a controlled plebiscite to change the nature of political system for a very long time to come. So when activists say constitution was to be changed, they are right. But the mistake is to assume that the document called the Constitution of India was about to be junked. It's a constitution in a deeper sense which was to be changed. Second proposition is that there is no positive mandate. This election was a moral, political, and personal defeat. A plebiscite can have only two answers. A plebiscite does not have in-between results. It's either yes or no. And in this case, no matter how you read it, the answer was no. And that's what makes this result so extraordinary. You could say uh, that they have 240. Yes, they do. But if you look at the context in which the election took place, if you look at the controls that were exercised, how the entire thing was designed and almost predetermined, then the ruling party, I mean, it's like Putin getting some 52% votes in Russia, you know, uh, something of that kind took place. I had said before the results came, that if BJP gets one seat less than 303, which is what their score was, and notwithstanding the entire bluster about 400 and so on, the threshold that BJP itself had set was not 272. The threshold was more than 2019. That's basically the claim was. And if BJP had succeeded in getting one seat more than 303 that they had in 2019, for the next five years, every television interview, whether it was on NEAT or on railway accident or on flood management or on GDP, you would have heard only one answer, but the people are with us. That's what this election was all about. And the answer is no. I had said, if BJP gets one seat less than 303, it will be a moral defeat. If they get one seat less than 272, it will be a political defeat. And if they get one seat less than 250, it will be a personal defeat. And you know for who? In whose name the election was fought? That's what the outcome is. There cannot be any two opinions about it. You can keep on doing statistics. I can keep doing that as well. But the fact is absolutely unambiguous. This is what has generated so much of hope. This is what has injected so much of oxygen in the air. Third proposition, 
this was not a routine vote on incumbent government, but an indirect vote on constitution, democracy, and secularism. This is a very complicated question. So I'll just state my uh, conclusion or judgment and then move on, which is to say, I do not, of course, assume that people of India stood up and voted for constitution, for secularism, for democracy. They don't normally. Even after emergency in 1977, people voted against excesses not, and, and sterilization, not so much directly on a word called democracy that they did not fully understand. So of course I do not expect, and a vote is always mediated through so many complicated layers region, caste, your candidate, all the specifics. But through all that, the fact is that consideration of democracy did matter. Indirectly, which is to say, people said, I, I, you know, the opinion polls are right to say that Mr. Modi was popular, is popular, way ahead of anyone else, yes. But the critical thing was that people said, just Mr. Modi's name is not enough for me to now cast my vote. I will think about the representative. I will think about my livelihood issues. I will think about uh, what's happening in my area, etc., and so on and so forth. On democracy, there was an unmistakable sense in some quarters of public to say, some boundaries are being crossed. As a villager in UP told me, I asked him, so Modi ji wants a third term. That's the term in UP, Panchavarshiye is for the term. What do you think? Instead of talking about Mr. Modi, he answered to me, he said, जब गांव में हम किसी को पहली बार सरपंच बनाते हैं वो डर के काम करता है सीधा दूसरी बार बना दें तो वो थोड़ा दो नंबर का सीख जाता है तीसरी बार बना दें तो सर के ऊपर चढ़ के डंडा चलाता है देयर वाज दैट अनमिस्टेकेबल सेंस इन द वे पीपल वोटेड ऑन सेकुलरिज्म इट वुड बी अ मिस्टेक टू अंडरस्टैंड टू थिंक दैट the people have turned secular, that all the poison and communalism has disappeared? No, of course not. And it did not disappear in Karnataka either when Congress won. But people said, well, this cannot be the decisive consideration on which I vote. You've made a temple, thank you very much. People actually approved of the temple most of the time. They had no problems, unlike people like me and many here, in the prime minister going and inaugurating a temple. But they were not willing to vote on that basis. Constitution was not directly a question for most people. They don't even understand. But among certain sections of Dalits, there was a clear sense that whatever little security that we have obtained in the last few decades, that is about to be taken away. So in those sense, democracy, constitution, and secularism became an issue through all the other layers that it usually cuts through. Fourth, it is not quite a return to democratic politics yet. Hope is a very treacherous thing. You know, we can, uh, especially if it comes after such a long time, uh, we can entertain ourselves with all kinds of hopes, illusions, dreams. Just look at what's happened in the last one month. Lynching is very much on. Hate speech, very much on. Bulldozers, more active than before. If you've had the misfortune of learning about what our honorable home minister said today, which I just learned 10 minutes ago, thanks to Ram Guha. Where is he? <laughs> you know, he just told me this is what he's heard. This. So, so you know that, you know, uh, 
it's not that we've had a dramatic change. And one thing that has not changed is the character of the regime. So any thought that some self-correcting mechanisms of democracy are in place, regime has learned lessons, we would have moderation, nothing of that kind. If anything, we could probably look at a more repressive regime, a regime out to prove that no, we are not weak. So we're not back to democratic politics yet. And I would not forget the fact that BJP has actually become stronger in some parts of the country. Of course, they've not become pop, you know, we must not forget that wherever BJP has become stronger, it is because BJP has come up as the, as the challenger. BJP has actually picked up anti-establishment votes in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, even in some ways Telangana. BJP is the anti-establishment party. Challenger and just that thing. So, but, but the fact is that BJP has got deeper. As an aside, I must say that this comforts me in one sense, that BJP has developed vested interests in South India. Uh, because in democracy, you know, ideals, principles are good things, but vested interests are the purest guarantee. Uh, so, BJP developing some hopes of getting seats in Tamil Nadu is good news for India. Less trouble for India in future. Less chances of delimitation being imposed now on South India. So, but that's, that's, a, but otherwise in terms of challenge, we must not think that we are back to democratic politics. Fifth, there is hope as long as we realize what that hope is and what it is not. I see many of my friends getting very excited about Yogi versus Maurya in UP, about RSS versus BJP. Nothing is going to come out of it, at least nothing positive. You know. I see a lot of hopes being put on TDP and JDU and BJP's allies putting some brakes on the BJP. I'm not saying that there is absolutely no effect. Yes, there would be. And yes, uh, if the government were to do something very anti-federal and anti-South India, they would be, then TDP has no option but to apply brakes for their sheer existence. Otherwise, I really do not think the allies are going to put much brakes on this government. Allies management is an old game in India, and there are many ways of managing your allies, some of which cannot be discussed here. Uh, but they are, they are reasonably good at it. I do not expect much to come from institutions either. Bureauc BJP is very much in control. State structures, state power, state institutions are very much under their thumb. I do not expect things to change dramatically overnight. Not from bureaucracy, certainly. What do I put my hopes on? One, on the fact that opposition has found voice. That's a major thing, and you could see that in the parliament session. More than that, in the fact that people's movements have found voice, that we can actually see protest. I said something similar two days ago at the Asian College of Journalism. And in case you are active on social media, you would have noticed that there has been demand for my arrest for having said so. Actually, there's a campaign in the last 24 hours by BJP trolls saying, this man is calling for civil war. Why is the honorable home minister who says lovely things as he said today, why is he not arresting this criminal Naxal? That's the campaign on social media. So let me reiterate with all the emphasis at my command so that the Honorable Home Minister can hear this again, that I think I pin much greater hopes on the street than on the parliament. Hindi has a much better expression. Sansad se unchi hai sadak. Aur lok tant sadak pe bachta hai, sansad pe nahi bachta. Ram Manohar Lohia had said, Ram Manohar Lohia had said 
जब सड़क सुनी हो जाती है तो संसद आवारा हो जाती है वेन स्ट्रीट्स आर एम्पटीड ऑफ पीपल ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट ऑफ मूवमेंट्स देन लेजिस्लेचर्स पार्लियामेंट्स लूज देयर वे सो येस आई एम सेंग इट विथ ऑल द एम्फेसिस एट माई कमांड दैट आई पुट होप्स मोर देन ऑन ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज I put hope on the fact that I expect street protests, people's movements, and popular resistance of the kind that kept a bit of our hope alive in the last five years. Farmers protest, NTCA protest, protests against land acquisitions. This, these are the kind of things that kept our hope alive. I expect this to get stronger, and that is where my real hope is. Sixth and the last point is that the way forward is not simple. The idea that we are be we are beginning we are we are looking at the beginning of the end of the Modi regime is too simple an idea. Uh, one thing we can be sure is that Mr. Modi will not. simply watch the meltdown of his regime like manmohan singh did he will do something about it legal illegal constitutional unconstitutional moral or immoral these things hardly matter uh, we should see a lot of action and contestation there are two paths one way that many of us think is that therefore what we need to do is to strengthen invigorate the battle for save constitution save democracy save the republic i believe in this but i have a slightly different take on it and that is where i would end what i have to say to my mind the battle for saving the republic is not is not directly through pro constitution pro democracy battle because in india the social constituency for battles of save constitution save liberalism save democracy is tiny this will have to be done by creating a large social block what is that social block it is the bottom of the pyramid basically bjp's electoral strategy has been to capture the top of the pyramid which naturally belongs to the bjp in caste terms in class terms and to take away small slices from the bottom to manufacture a majority those who want to defend this republic have only one choice to consolidate the bottom of the pyramid it might be a harsh thing to say but if we have some hope back in this republic it is not because of the elite of this country unfortunately the elite to which all of us sitting here belong has let this country down not once many times and the hope really is in consolidating the bottom of the pyramid creating a historic social block in caste terms and in class terms a coalition of farmers workers dalit adivasi obc minority and this bottom half of the pyramid is not 50% of our population it's well over 80% of our population that is what needs to be consolidated in other words the battle for recovery of republic or reclaiming the republic has to become a radical battle for social reorganization of this country it's a great challenge it's a great opportunity i had said that we are at the at the moment in a no man's land india's first republic which began on 26th of january 1950 has come to an end we may like it we may not like it it came to end around 2019 or somewhere about that 
the BJP had almost ensured that the Second Republic would be inaugurated in this month. It would be a de facto Hindu Rashtra electoral autocracy. That did not happen. Slide has been halted, not reversed. We do not yet know what the Second Republic of India will be like. That makes this such a critical moment in history for all of us to put in every ounce of energy. I see many people of my generation here in the audience with some gray hair. Can I say something? Our generation has let this country down. We are criminals. The country that you and I inherited was a poor country, but that country did not celebrate lynching. That country did not garland rapists. That country did not issue genocide threat from public platforms. And if this is happening in our lifetime, it is because we were busy in building our careers. We did not do what was needed. Now is the time to recover. Now is the time to build a second republic, a republic which is more true to the promise of our constitution. Thank you very much. Matashto Vishesha video Galanu Nodalu, Matu Hosa video Galabagay Tirialu, Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe Madi, Matu bell icon click Madi.